Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast presented by Fishhawk Electronics. If you're looking for news, tips, and stories about fishing the Great Lakes, you've come to the right place. And now your host, Chris Larson. Welcome to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast. Today, our guest is Arnie Arredato, and we are going to be talking some deep water salmon trolling. Arnie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Ready to talk some fishing. First, Arnie, what depths do you consider deep water? What does that mean to you? Well, I, you know, I consider deep water being outside of like 180 feet. And a lot of times when we talk about deep water, uh, I'm not talking about the, the, you know, the surface the halfway down. I'm talking about, uh, you know, you know, halfway, halfway down to the bottom, the bottom 50% or the bottom. 30% a lot of times uh, is what we're focusing on. Why, why go deep? What are the advantages? Why are you doing that? What makes you decide to do that uh, as opposed to fishing somewhere else? I know uh, you're located out of the Kenosha, Wisconsin area. There's a lot of structure around there. And a lot, most of the guys that are fishing in that area seem to be fishing that structure. Why are you going deep for fish? Well, it, you know, it all came up, you know, it's like anything else. You start, uh, you start doing something out of necessity. And, uh, you know, at different times, uh, you know, groups of fish come in and out, we lose them. Well, while spending time, you know, looking for the right, you know, the right water temperature, you know, away from the surface, I began to notice a lot of bait fish, especially uh, first thing in the morning. It wouldn't, you know, when we're out, well, it's still, it's still dark because the sun's just starting to work its way up. The graph, you know, tells you a whole different story than it does once the uh, once the sun's up. And uh, fortunately, I you know I was there a lot of times before the sun started to make its move, and I could see uh, you, know, you could see a lot more what was going on uh, down below. And you know, it, it necessity is the mother of invention, you know, and we had tougher fishing and I was seeing all kinds of bait, you know, near the bottom and the bottom portion of, of the water column and game fish. And for years, I thought, you know, it's outside of, you know, 150, 160 down was kind of out of range. Well, as, as time progressed and our fishing kind of got tougher, you know, we started looking for places to catch fish. And that's, that's pretty much why I started a lot of the, uh, like you say, the deep water fishing the past, you know, 140, 150 down. And uh, it's kind of evolved, taken its own, its own path since then. When is the best time to do that? I mean, I'm sure there are times where you are uh, fishing that structure, but when is it the time to kind of go out and do that deep water fishing? We typically here, you know, in the Kenosha area, you know, the south, southern part of the, of, uh, Lake, you know, Wisconsin, Lake Michigan. Uh, we're, we're probably doing it more toward the end of July and August. And that seems like, you know, there's a whole different, uh, I, I'd almost call them three separate, three separate groups in the water column. You know, we have the high bait, the medium bait, and the low bait. And uh, believe it or not, a lot of them are, especially once we get that late July, August, the bait that we see near the surface is a small, Year, you know, class, year class, the, this year's hatch. And a lot of times the, the middle is a mixture of, you know, some of the early, you know, last year. So let's just call them one, two, and three-year-old alewives. And then a lot of times near the bottom, it seems like it's that two, three, four, and five-year-old uh, year class alewives, the much larger ones, the, you know, the five to seven-inch alewives. So how do you do that? You talked about the fish being different parts of the water calm. When you're setting up your setup and you're getting your rods out, how are you kind of targeting those different parts of the water column? Well, you know, like, the, you know, let's say 100 feet and above, uh, you know, I'm still using a lot of standard, uh, you know, just divers in my coppers. But once we start getting to that below 100 feet, I'm basically targeting with downriggers and a couple of uh, wire divers. And I know it sounds, sounds funny, but uh, with the larger diver, the, uh, the, uh, the Dreamweaver, the 128, 
you can, you know, you can get it down, you know, 180, 190 feet. It obviously takes a lot of line. It's, and I primarily use wire, uh, but I can get it down there. So I'm, I'm, it's a limited spread for multiple reasons. You know, one, you know, we're dealing with a current that's pretty hard to read down there. And, uh, and uh, that causes a lot of issues as far as tangling. And, uh, and number two, it's just, you, you know, you're limited on what you can actually get down there with, you know, how many riggers you have on your boat and, and your divers. That's where the divers kind of add to the equation quite a bit. Because if you're willing to put a wire diver out, you know, four or 500 feet of, of wire, you'll, you'll attain those depths. Yeah, let's unwrap that a little bit. How do you manage those rods? You know, you're talking about four or 500 feet of line out. You're dropping down riggers down 150 plus feet down. How do you go about managing all those rods and, and managing that with the anglers as a charter captain? Well, what we're doing is, you know, first assessing what the current looks like down there is the, hard, is the first step. And I typically, you know, start with my shoot rigger and uh and my center rigger and get it down there and start taking a you know a reading on what the current is you know also uh you know a great tool that you know i always tell people that it, it's definitely it's a time saver it's a, a anger management tool it's, it's a lot of things that's a, a pro you know a depth and uh time sorry temperature and speed at the ball and uh you know fish hawk makes a great one depth rater has one and uh that's a that's a huge tool that I use in determining what the current is and what we have going on. Now from there, that's like my foundational move. I, I start out with my center rigger, kind of get a feel for what the current's doing. Then, you know, I, I'm setting up other rods, but in the in the main focus is getting getting the direction right. So I'm trying to fish into the current primarily. Now that's not always possible, but I, I typically I, I like to fish into the current. So kind of getting getting the lay of the land and then once I know it once I can I determine what the current's like and how strong it is then that dictates how many other rods I get down and how, or how many other placements now I'll start with my my center but that doesn't mean I'll stay with it you know if the current uh, uh if it's strong a lot of times I'm limited to my two down riggers, which I pull the center one and I go with the uh with the booms or the out downs and and kind of the big key is keeping everything spread apart that's that's definitely a key to this and uh instead of having multiple divers i only have one diver on each side and typically i don't like to set it uh much further than like a one and a half setting going out because then it's being pulled out to the side and it loses its ability to get down and trying to get at those depths kind of a it turns into a a big factor is getting it down as you know as straight as possible what kind of baits are you running Ernie? well down there uh like you say down there past that like 140 150 i'm uh, i'm a big flasher fly rotator fly fisherman i i would say that that's probably you know that that would be you know in my normal spread, that's probably 80, 85 percent of my setups are, are flash or fly, a fly rotator, some kind of combination like that. That's where a lot of times the the current dictates which ones I use and how far back behind the weight I can put them, and you know just to, uh, to alleviate some of the headaches that come with this. Yeah. Do you think that? I mean, obviously that far down. You know, color becomes less of a factor. Do you think it makes a difference when fishing deep? What color you're running? I, you know what, I, I would say yes, but that's more in the like the fine tune stage of of the fishing uh, for that that for that time. You know that we're out. You know, I stick to the primaries. My primaries would be white, chrome, chartreuse. Um, I do like the the green. The lighter green, uh, and uh, and uh, well, Spin Doctor makes one, and uh, and so does Hot Spot. Uh, but those are one of those things on that day they're picking it out. But typically, the white, you know, white and chrome or pearl and chrome, whatever you know you want to call it, those are those are pretty much my mainstays. You know, once I start fishing that 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 uh, that deeper stuff. 
How does the bite differ when you're fishing out there deep compared to fishing structure in your area? Well, the, the main difference is, uh, you know, the, the hardest thing is noticing like the small, like a, a short hit or a, especially a smaller fish. But you have to realize how much pressure is on your release just to get the weight, just to get that down there, you know, on the, on the weight. Um, I, I personally run monofilament all from on the rod, but there's a lot, of, you know, a lot of my, a couple of my friends have been, uh, have been using braid, you know, uh, uh, you know, whether it's suffix or, or power pro, but a, a super line because it does cut the water a little bit better and there's no stretch. So you're, you're getting a more direct, uh, look at the, at the bite. You know, that, that's one of the things. The one thing I would tell you is, uh, the bite down deeper seems to have a much prolonged period in the morning. Instead of it just being, you know, an hour, an hour and a half where they go crazy, uh, it seems like they're, 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 they're feeding a little bit. They're, there's probably not as many feeding. Uh, though, how would I say it? The feeding frenzy that they're in in the morning is a more relaxed. It's more drawn out. A lot of times you'll have very, you know, we'll have good bites for three, three and a half, four hours to start the morning and then you'll see it taper off a little bit and then again one of my favorite times to be in the deep water is that like 11 to 2 period uh of the day because they fed they've had a little bit of time now they you know now all of a sudden they got a little bit of room and they're back at you know they're back at feeding again and uh they're aggressive but it it, it definitely seems like it's a little bit slower you know it's not just put anything down and they hit it then you have to kind of that's where a lot of the fine tuning you know with with you know with your rotator your flash or um you know getting what they're they're picking out whether it be you know a crush glow tape or a prism tape or you know no tape or you know it's just like anything else there's they're seeing something you know obviously we have to figure out what it is um that being said you know my fly like a lot of my fly selections aren't uh aren't much different from what i run you know in the upper part of the water column so i'm a big fan uh i'm a big fan of uh of pearl flies uh i'm a big fan of bullfrog which is an iridescent fly with little rubber legs that's made by howie howie's tackle those that's probably my favorite there's something about it like when you look at it in your hand it's one thing when you put it in the water it takes a whole different look uh, it refracts the light a little bit different how does a bag when you're out there fishing deeper, how does that differ compared to the bag that you may bring back to the to the dock when you're fishing the structure? Well, the one thing I don't see very many of are uh like any any rainbow trout uh or, or brown trout obviously out there, uh down down there. Uh and it's typically a, a lake trout and a king salmon bite. When we have uh the nice thing in our area is the coal has come back to our area in uh, in that July August period, but a lot of times they're they're in, they're uh, I would say further up in the column, but they're typically below 100 feet, like that 100, 140, 150. Whereas it seems like the kings they even though it's uh, they they're not afraid to come up, obviously seems like they like to hang on that bottom 20 feet of the water column. And I'm talking from, you know, 180, you know, to 260. Like I said, last year we had a period where there was a few of us fishing very close to the bottom. And uh, and we were seeing a mixture of uh, kings and, uh, and lake trout out as far as 325 feet. What do you think is the hardest part about fishing deep water? What is the biggest challenge? Biggest challenge is the current, by far. Uh, trying to get your angle right and your speed right, and that's that's why I said, you know, uh, uh, you know, having speed and temperature at the at the ball is 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 uh, enormous because even though it looks, you know, there's there's a lot of water, you're covering a lot of water from the surface down to you know to manipulate the cable a little bit. If you're you know if you're just using the downrigger cable to give you a 100% indication 
sometimes it can be a little bit different because we'll have a you know a, just below the surface current and then we'll have another current you know way downstairs and uh and that probe really helps with getting getting it right you know or, you know or getting it close to right you know some days it's uh the current's so strong it's it, it's quite a challenge to uh to figure it out the good thing and then in, in this area is you know we have a couple of uh very strong influences on our current and for the majority of the time you, you see you, before you go out you know which way the current's going to be as long as we haven't had you know any kind of you know strong winds or somewhere on the lake they haven't experienced a really strong wind recently the current's relatively you can you can kind of guess what direction you want to be fishing before you go out all right, is there anything about deep water salmon trolling that I didn't ask you about that you wanted to bring up? Yeah, I, I would say the only thing is uh, is the verse that, you know, be, people, you know, it's hard to, to open up your mind to, to trying it and uh, versatility on on what you're doing, you know, and not being afraid to try it. It, it seems like a lot of people just think that, you know, 180 or 220 feet down is just too far down for these fish. And, you know, there's, there's other people around the lake that, you know, I fish much deeper and caught, you know, caught salmon there. Um, the only other thing I would say is uh, if you're going to try it or, you know, which you should try, you definitely need, you know, a 15 pound weight minimum, you know, 20 is better. And if you're down or just can handle it at 25, um, the 20 seems to be about the most manageable for for myself and, and a few other guys that I work with. We seem to have settled in about 20 pounds, a 20 pound weight. Uh, still gives us a little bit of blowback, but it definitely lets us be able to read the current and get everything straight. Uh, that that would that would be it. There's going to be a you know a big learning curve with it on on your releases on your downriggers. I I personally use a Scotty's release. Um, but uh, there's going to be a learning curve on that. Ernie, if somebody wants to get out on the water with you, uh, how can they do that? How can they get in touch with you? Tell us a little bit about your charter. Oh, okay. We're, uh, we're out of Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is, you know, the southern, most southern port in uh, Wisconsin on Lake Michigan. Um, we fish seven days a week. We have two trips daily. Um, the best way is probably you go to my website, and it, my business is South Port charter and it's southportcharter.com um, or you can look on facebook uh, my facebook i do a lot of fishing reports mainly is what it is i kind of give you in depth did pretty detailed reports from the last you know the last outing and uh you know hopefully some good information talk a lot about what direction i troll current what i'm seeing what i'm using you know with uh, a lot of pictures of uh the bait that have been hot recently Appreciate it. Thanks so much for coming on the show, sharing your insights. Good luck on the water the rest of the year. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, it was a pleasure being on the show. Thanks for listening to the Great Lakes Fishing Podcast presented by Fishhawk Electronics. For more information on fishing the Great Lakes, visit our blog at fishhawkelectronics.com. 